All right, here we are. We're back. We're back for another panel. Uh, we have, as you can see, Evila there up in the top corner there, and on the bottom we've got DC Douglas. You put me on the bottom. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Already problems, right? Uh, this is table. this is pretty awesome. Uh, this was a last minute addition to to form this panel. When I found out that Eva, you know, I wasn't sure how to get a hold of you, but I found out that you were interested, so I was able to get a hold of you that way. And then we talked, and I was like, well, I've got DC who. I need to fill out a panel somehow for him. <laughs> so, and then you showed up. I was like, "Well, there's a RE5 panel, and this is awesome because we've never had Eve on before. So we get a chance to break the ice and introduce you to the road, you know, our universe." <laughs> Thank so welcome, you. welcome. And DC, it's great having you back here. Uh, last last interview you did, we had a great time. We laughed the whole time. I know me and Tony were <laughs> laughing the whole time. Yeah, so, we're, gonna, we're gonna be very different this time, though. Yeah. Completely <laughs> serious. Completely <laughs> serious. Very serious. Yeah. <laughs> I was disappointed I couldn't be a part of that one that we that you guys did with DC. That one was a lot of fun. I re-listened to it and I was like, man, he seems like a cool guy. I must have been drunk, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Eva, it's this is a uh, Resident Evil Five came out a while ago. What have you been up to uh, since then? What, what kind of stuff have you been getting into? Oh, the last eleven years, mm -hmm. um, a lot, a lot has happened. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Uh, there's been here and there a couple other video games I've been able to work on. Uh, I've been able to work on the last two Star Wars games, which was fun. Ooh, that's yeah. awesome. Ooh, they, yeah, they, that's a great a great set to be on. And um, I, you know, got to be the voice of Elena a couple of times for Street Fighter, mm -hmm. and uh, she's a lot of fun. Uh, and then outside of that, uh, you know, been doing my acting, um, doing a little bit more music and writing mm -hmm. and just kind of branching out in, in different ways, mm -hmm. but you know, keeping, keeping busy. I'm seeing some positive, like, just like someone's, uh, Heather says, a warrior goddess. <laughs> a lot <laughs> no, of love fine. in the chat. Shut up, love in the chat. Fires me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, DC, how are things been for you since, you know, the last time we talked three years ago? Pretty much downhill. Um, <laughs> At least he's honest. <laughs> uh, let's see, so three years ago, let's see. Because um, uh, three, three years ago? Oh, yeah, no, I got some good stuff. Um, I did a lot of life changing in for myself as mm -hmm. well. So I, a lot was kind of concentrated more on that. But the the voiceover has been doing really well. The on camera career started to get. Um, I've been uh, trying to pursue an on camera career. Trying to pursue that sounds horrible. I've been an on camera actor in Los Angeles since nineteen. Well, I moved here in eighty five, but since nineteen eighty nine. Um, and I've always ever gotten like a, a job one one to four jobs a year is what, the way it's been. Um, some really great. Some like eh, whatever. And in the last uh, eight years, and thanks to Resident Evil as well, um, I've gotten these indie films where they pay nothing. I mean, they pay, but they don't pay much. And they fly <laughs> right, right. they're doing their little indie film. And, but giving me great juicy characters to have fun with. And I realized I love doing that way more than I like going on to NCIS and, and being you know, lawyer number five or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Even though lawyer five will keep paying me probably for another 10 years. Yeah. Um, and so I made a choice to... Um, to start living my life as me as opposed to a product. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm exper experimenting with long hair because I've always wanted long hair. I don't shave my goatee anymore unless I, unless it's mocap. And, um, and uh, yeah, so, um, uh, I, so I took a step back from it and I was about to step back in this year. <laughs> and then this year <laughs> hit. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so next year is when I'll be stepping back into on-camera pursuits and stuff like that. So, but uh, otherwise, um, that's kind of it. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of like I always forget my credits after after they've happened. So there's been stuff that's come out in the last three years. I did a gig in Japan in March, which was really exciting. It was a mocap gig, um, but I can't say what it was for. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing is, is they're probably only using our bodies and not our voices. Mm. That is weird. <laughs> Which I'm like, so why did you hire me? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, I got a free trip to Japan. Yeah, um, that, that works. Awesome. Yeah, so it's like, I would like to be really excited about it if they were also using my voice, so, but they're not. So it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, well, whatever. Good, good luck, guys, whatever that fucking thing is. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I am, um, I, I'm not safe for, I'm not family friendly. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally okay. Yeah, we're it's fine. fine. Like, uh, I hate all families. <laughs> <laughs> There was an interesting comment that actually made me think for a second for Eva, talking about how similar you look to your character Sheva. 
Did they do any kind of model creation off of your appearance to for her character? You know, I don't think so initially. I I, I know they had uh, another actress, Michelle Vanderwater, mm -hmm. who they did the whole, you know, the face scans, uh, face scans with, and um, you know, that was at the start of the project. I really, honestly, can't know for sure what happened over the year that I worked on it, mm -hmm. but um, you know, there I. You know, I I feel like there's parts of it that yeah. look good to me. I mean, you know, if it ended up being a mixture, I'm I'm not mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember um, watching. It should be known. It should be known though that that um, they did not do my face. They did my feature, my expressions, but not my face for Wesker. But that is my body. So, oh, it is. Okay. Uh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah they Actually, I, my body, so. you had a a movie where you had the the blonde hair slick back and you pulled off a, a solid wesker oh yeah apocalypse kisser i think that yeah. one was right look at you knowing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well they had you like oh, sitting yeah. in a chair with like slicked hair dark and you're just sipping tea and i'm like that's like wesker like right there <laughs> yeah. you know? producers of that really cool people um that uh, that made up uh, and you can find it online apocalypse kiss but they were they were the reason they were, they were <laughs> they were fans of um the game and so they asked me if i would they gave me the choice between doing the role of the the serial killer, who's one of the leads, or a reporter who they could shoot me out in the day. And I'm like, no, I want the give me the serial, oh, killer. serial killer. Yeah. But then I came up with because it was like we had six months, and I and so he had to be in shape because he told me there would be a nude scene. So that's the movie that got me to get to start exercising again. Thank God. And <laughs> uh, but they but while I was doing it, it occurred to me and I go, you know, since you're fans of Wesker. We could do an homage, you know, even though this character is very different than Wesker, we could physically make him look like Wesker. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, you do that? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so dyed the on and, and super tan. I, the one time I went to a place and I paid them to do the, the spray where they where you stand naked in front of a stranger and they spray tan you and they make your little abs. <laughs> yeah. like, that. I spent like 150 bucks to have them do that for wow. It worked. I, go do that. I want abs. <laughs> The whole week I'm in Philadelphia, I'm leaving my, my, my bed sheets, my white bed sheets with like this little brown glow. <laughs> 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 Real quick yeah. in the chat here, Joe White, the voice of Chris Redfield in Resident Evil 1 remake. He says, DC, please, let's have a yeah. beer together once this pandemic is over. Always wanted to meet you and never had the chance. So Chris and Wesker, they're going to become pals Absolutely. and have a beer together. <laughs> I, almost, cool. I almost had you two on the same panel because I was trying to figure out, again, I had Joe and then I had you and I was like, I have a Wesker and a Chris. I could kind of put them together, you know, <laughs> maybe. But it worked out that you know I put uh, Joe early in the schedule, and then I, I got Eva on board, so it worked out pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, that'd be fun in the future. <laughs> hey, so so everybody who's watching, uh, who can make ask questions and stuff. Aside from just asking um, Eva and I questions, you can also ask questions of Beggy. She knows all of the Resident Evil lore, mm -hmm. and she can answer like, <laughs> questions. Uh, for y'all, and I'll, oh, I, I partly am saying this because I want to see her tested. Yeah, <laughs> put her on the spot. Actually, wait, her facial impression was just perfect. Uh -huh. like, uh. <laughs> okay, I have, a, I have a question for Douglas. Have you read the S.D. Perry novels, and if so, what do you think of Wesker's character in them? No. No. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, is that like one of those erotic fanfic things? No. It's not. It's a, <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, okay. There are seven uh, novels. Mm -hmm. They do follow the games, um, all but two of them. Two of them are original stories to bridge the events of one and two and two and three. Mm -hmm. But um, the novel, the initial novel, The Umbrella Conspiracy, Wesker is like very, I would say he's very fitting of the games and he's very, um, you know, kind of cocky and he's really just um very fitting of his character but he has like a very horrid death scene in that game that yeah. that that book was released before the remake was made before they wanted to bring back wesker and they have this really terrifying death scene in the first book of wesker dying to chimeras and there's like four that like one like rips into his leg and there's like a yeah, bunch of other yeah he ones. gets he gets pretty pretty gnarled so. it's it's crazy and then before he comes back in code veronica and it was really hard to read um and i was, I was wondering i was wondering what your your thoughts about that were no sadly i'm um uh, i'm uh, i'm i'm like a, i'm basically a basic white girl um i literally <laughs> as an example this is the, my reading ability uh we were at a cafe i was with a friend and i was looking there and i go 
oh, look at that. They make a, they make a rosé cappuccino. That sounds so nice. And she's like, um, she's like, no, it's, it's rose. <laughs> rosé? <laughs> it's French. You face, white girl. <laughs> but no, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, unfortunately, I'm not a big reader. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a news junkie and I'm a documentary junkie. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and as far as video games, like, I don't even know what I was doing when I got, uh, Umbrella Chronicles, um, and Resident Evil 5, like, people had to film me in before I started doing that role, and I'm like, oh, I think I got a handle on this. Oh, you're killing me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, short maybe. Yeah. maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But, he, but he's funny, come back numerous that, times and other things. What's funny is people think that that's the only game I've done, uh, when it's really been, it's like eight games now or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and yeah. A, a, a Tanko game. Um, and then there's that weird Teppin card game thing. Teppin, oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Which, just as a, okay, I've had my coffee, I can tell. Um, the, but there's a weird thing in that, that when we did that recording session, there's a line where he's like, um, you have five minutes left. Yeah. Like, and I said, hey guys, can we change that to seven? Please. And yeah, like, yeah that'd be perfect. Like, and then they're on the Skype to talking to the producers. They came back, you know, we got to keep it five. And I'm like, you're missing a whole big thing here, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Trying yeah. to help you. Uh, yeah, oh, we, um, seven, we got a twenty dollars super chat from Jojo Spud. Uh, this is for Eva. It says, "Hello, Eva. I don't know if you remember me, but I cosplayed as Fairy Tale Sheva at Sack Anime nearly ten years ago, and I've been wow. a fan of yours ever since. And I've always wanted to meet DC Douglas in person. So here's a donation for Rokon. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Aww. that. Are you guys doing donations? <laughs> yeah, we're uh, the money that gets collected is going to go to trying to make this that in-person event next year. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. I'll, so, I'll tweet." For the links then. Oh, perfect. Yeah. It's all, uh, we're stockpiling it. And like I said, we want to raise money. We're going to try and do some more fundraisers throughout the year so we can do this all in person next year, hopefully. You know, rent the venue yeah, for a couple Scrooge days. McDuck money bin, where yeah. it's all going. Yeah. <laughs> the big vault that we can just jump in and swim around. <laughs> cool. Eva, do you remember JoJo Spud with that? Yes. That, uh, I, I remember, um, well, I, I remember the name and I remember, uh, I, I'm imagining what I think it is. I hope it, it's the same costume uh because there there weren't so many uh at that time i mean yeah 2009 mm -hmm. so so the few that dressed up and did it really well were quite memorable they stand me. out yeah yeah hi sweetie <laughs> <laughs> and then there's uh oh i think we missed one. Oh yeah it's like a five dollar super chat from uh, my friends brad and maddie um i know dc you've met them a couple of times brad's a really really oh yeah dude. of course yeah suppose i'm gonna I, I was at one point. I was going to officiate their wedding. <laughs> Ooh! Wow. That'd be cool. That would be awesome. Um, yeah. Fucking way. Yeah. But, the, their wedding sadly got pushed back to I think next year because of the virus and everything. Yeah. Like like it's next uh, or something like that. I can't remember the exact date. Uh, they probably don't want me telling people that online anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, but yeah, no, they're good friends of mine. They're really good people. Nice. We got another twenty dollars super chat from Thunderbeard. It says great to see these awesome people on Rokon. Seeing Eva makes me want to see Shiva return even more. Me too. I agree. I agree. I think that's a character. Is it Shiva? Or Shiva? Yeah, I always get Shiva or Shiva. It's Shiva. Uh, it's Shiva. Shiva. Okay. It is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. Definitely yeah. pronounced Shiva in the yeah. game. I'm actually really familiar with your performance because I just played through Resident Evil Five with yeah, you did. John. On yeah. Twitch. Yep. Uh, and I had to play as you, so uh, oh. I, felt, I felt uh powerful. I felt beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, I finally had a butt. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I could give that to you. Great, great job. It was the first time ever, like, really deep, like, deeply playing the game. I, mm -hmm. uh, one time, years before, a friend ran through it really quickly, and all I remembered was treasure. Um, this time around, I was like, oh, like, like, the, the story itself. I still, I, I, I have problems with the game myself, personally. Not that I'm a gamer and I would know, but, like, when you do interstitials between scenes and yep. you tell us about something, that needs to give me information to help me in what I'm about to see. And when it's just a random factoid, it's like, why are you wasting night? And then, of course, if it loads really quickly, you don't even get to read it. So right, yeah. Right. Mm, that's true. Yep. Uh, I, I kind of want to dive into Resident Evil 5 and Sheva, her motion cap type stuff that you were doing. You were doing that with Ruben Langdon, right? Yes. Ruben oh, yeah. uh, was going to try and make this uh, convention, but he had to pull out because he had something, unfortunately, going on, which is fine. Um, but I want to kind of look at what the experience was like, because you guys were in like full gear doing these scenes, right? You you were in like the actual for outfits. some of it, right? I I think what what we went through is unlike any other video game shoot. Um, mm -hmm. I I I think they were trying to bring a a whole movie feel to right. 
experience, movie experience to the game. So when I was brought on and I did not know what this project was because everything mm -hmm. was secret, um, we went through a whole shoot of the visualizations, uh, the Prevas. Right. And that's when they had us get dressed up and shoot all the, the scenes in costume. Mm -hmm. um, that was, you know, done to send back to Capcom so that they could finalize what they wanted to do with the motion capture. I don't right. think that's typical to do the whole shoot like that because we basically shot like a movie for a yeah. month. Yeah. Yeah, Just we actually uh, heard that this morning with um, the cast of RE6. They basically end up doing the same thing. They shot like oh, a, so all, yeah, all the yeah, cut scenes I... were shot in, in costume and everything. And then, like they said, it's basically like a movie on a black box set. Yeah, and, and, and I guess maybe that's Capcom's way because, I mean, every game I've worked on doing motion capture has never been like that. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, straight to the, the suits. The suits and yeah. So, so, you know, that was a lot of fun. Um, this was before I was going to be the voice. So we shot through all of that for about a month. And mm -hmm. then when we started, I guess I ended up, you know, finding out that I was gonna do the voice uh, shortly after that. And there was a mix of, you know, doing the, the voiceovers and, and the voice sessions and mm -hmm. then the motion capture sessions shortly after that. Um, but yeah, I mean, by then it's great because you already know the script. Yeah, really you've already well. gotten familiar with it. You understand how the scenes are going to work. You know what the script looks like. So yeah, at that you point, it's just character really well. It's very comfortable at that point. Right, and Ruben's a great guy. I'm sure he's easy to work oh with. Oh my god, he's very I knowledgeable. Mean, <laughs> and it was my first game. Uh -huh. I mean, I had worked. I had worked doing some uh, motion capture on some smaller games, but this was really like the first big project I was working on. So he was so helpful um you know there was you know a lot of people on the crew that were mm -hmm. just kind of guiding me in the right direction right we have another 20 dollars uh donation here from ajusha wake i think i've probably spelled that completely or said that completely wrong <laughs> uh it says question for anyone but i kind of want to direct it towards dc because it involves wesker if wesker came back how would you have it from wesker himself <laughs> yeah. how would wesker return <laughs> Um, at triple scale? No, sorry, that's an inside <laughs> Hollywood joke. <Okay. laughs> um, if you were, well, you will, I will, you see, here's the thing is it's, you can go two ways. Either he could be, it could be, if he comes back, then it's a clone. In other words, mm -hmm. so it's like nothing ever happened. He can still go on being as Albert Wesker. Right. Or it could be, it's, he did survive the volcano. Somebody <laughs> sent me a, a, a little video of the, of the credits and apparently there's water. <laughs> Hmm. credits and if you look there's like a something in the water that swims by at one point in the credits oh, so really? something is, they're saying wesker's alive so, yeah. <laughs> so there it is was, like, 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 back as a mutated <laughs> version of him so not so imagine like the tyrant but he's <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you would, uh, with, because this mutation was pretty crazy. That that would be interesting seeing that Wesker return. Well, what have you been doing? The tyrant talk, that's kind of like what it would be. So there wouldn't be a lot of, um, like, like dialogue. I mean, there'd be like maybe one or two dialogue scenes, but the rest of it is just him chasing you through the whole game. Yeah, so pretty much. <laughs> You'd still have the tricks. sunglasses on, right? Obviously. You'd still have to have yeah. the shoes. <laughs> well, of course, yeah. Uh, you know, so. I, yeah. like, I always I always love that part like where he punches the missile and like uh you know like like what like the transformation that happens and I always just thought I was like he wasn't trying to do that he was just trying to find his sunglasses he just wanted to kick Chris's ass he's like where are my sunglasses there they are <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like oops <laughs> yeah that'd be interesting uh which version would we get back uh, the clone I think would probably work the best because that's the most free range like you said it wouldn't be as uh monstrous you wouldn't be restricted so much to right. like one type of you could be Wesker. You can ham it up all you want. You know, you could do your your monologues. <laughs> or he could. You could. We could do both. That that he 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 knows how to control it now, so that when he gets mm. angry, yeah. things mm. pop out of him. And if he gets like, ah, yeah, then, then, he, then he mutates. Yeah, yeah. But like a blend, it could be a yeah. Yeah, that would be interesting <laughs> yeah. too. So we have. He's never uh... coming back. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> Lava's pretty final. <laughs> uh, F, yeah. F Slayer twelve ninety donated five bucks says. Miss Ladera, you voiced Elena too. Like it's wow. <laughs> and he says, "Thank you for playing positive black women." Oh, thank you. I, you know, I, I'm I'm really happy to have gotten the opportunity to do so. It, there's not a lot of us 
in, in the video game world. So um, yeah, it, I love Elena too. I mean, uh, you know, happy and yep. strong. I mean, happy, strong, positive women. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Some of way. <laughs> yeah, no, she's uh, well. The, the the cool thing about Elena from because uh, you did it during the Street Fighter Four era and Street Fighter Cross Tekken, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, she actually got banned from tournaments because she was really good. <laughs> uh, but she also has a move that no other character in the game has, where she actually can heal herself. One of her uh, her special abilities is she touches the ground and she heals from it. So well, it was very kind of very <laughs> like she's very connected to the earth. Yeah. Dude, don't laugh. She's connected to the earth. No, it was like I was I was just like, oh man, they're gonna like, ban this at one point. And I think like for like one of the, the big have, evil competitions, they, they had to do it. But she's good in yeah, super right? third strike, she's really good too, because she's got long legs that just kick everybody from full screen. Like I'm a huge Street Fighter guy. So so like, yeah. I know these things. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. but the thing is, knock her out and she lands on the, the ground. ground she immediately Get back pops up. back up, yeah. right? Can't yeah, yeah. yeah. Back up. Never, yeah. Hey, which which game? Which uh, Street Fighter is this? Uh, Street Fighter Four. Uh, yeah, Street Fighter Four is where uh, she has that ability. Mm -hmm. uh, Super Street Fighter Four. Very cool. yeah. That's Older very Street cool. 4, I think it was. Yeah. There's so many iterations of Four throughout the years. We have um, another ten dollars super yeah, chat from the Patched Vest. Uh, I want to ask DC's portrayal of Wesker changes between Umbrella Chronicles, almost wah like cold machine portrayal, and mm -hmm. RE5's more unhinged maniac. Was this a direction or actor based decision? I think uh, uh, this I was bad that. acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. Here's, here's the deal on this. This is a, a, I'll try to make this, this answer as short as possible. So, uh, number one, I don't play video games, um, except now because of Proton John. Thank you, Proton John. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, so I don't play video games, and I got the audition through this uh, uh, place called Cup of Tea Productions, uh, run by these lovely ladies, and because um, I worked a lot there, so they brought me in on this thing where I needed to voice match Peter Jessup, who we had, I had the same agent with him, mm -hmm. and I knew him, but he wasn't available for that gig, and he had this weird kind of marbled thing he did with his voice, which like just really, like, Almost very difficult to impersonate, mm. and uh, but I booked that, and I'm like, cool. And it's a lot of it's monologuing through that game, and so we were, and of course, every every game's got usually a different director, and so each director has their own impression of what they think the producers want, right? So in this one, we were very controlled, and it, and it was that kind of as you as you described, and I'm also trying to do Peter Jessup's voice, mm. so that's that game. Then I get, uh, thanks to Ruben Langdon, um, he, he, he loved me as Wesker and wanted me in, he wanted me to uh, do Resident Evil 5, both, he wanted me to audition for the mocap, mm -hmm. but I'd thrown my back out and I was horrible in that audition, obviously did not get it. Um, <laughs> but they brought me in for, sorry, my hair, but they brought me in for um, uh, the voiceover of it and the face mocap of it with all the dots and things, or mm -hmm. they put little metal beads on me then. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but so I'm, I'm ready to do Peter Jessup, you know, uh, and I go into the recording booth and they get the cameras lined up and all of that. And the producers like it was a really kind of big voiceover production. And then they go, OK, we're going to play a sample just so you can get into character. And then they play Richard Waugh. And I'm like, that's not Peter. <laughs> <laughs> On the fly, I had to reinterpret as best I could what he was doing off of one sample they played. Oh. Um, and then, of course, it's written very operatic and they mm -hmm. wanted operatic acting. I, I prefer to underplay when, it, if I can, with mm -hmm. the character, especially with, with bad guys. It's, it's, they're more evil the more you can underplay them. But they oh, kept yeah. pushing it to be more broader and louder and nasty and, and arrogant and dismissive and all of this stuff. And so, and they kept pushing me to, where I would want to bring it in on like a four, they wanted like an eight or nine. Wow. And um, so that's, and of, of course this, by the way, is, You've got what I, you've got me trying to do some news voice that I haven't really heard. Mm -hmm. And also what I'd like to do as a character. Then you have a director who wants to direct me in the way that he thinks it should be, but he also has to then translate and please the producers who are in another room listening to it. And, and, there's, and they're saying what they want, but they're Japanese and they don't yeah. speak English. So the translator is trying to translate what they want to the director. <laughs> so they combine all that together and you get uh, various versions of Wesker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, that's like a really you. interesting story yeah. because um, a lot of the English localizations as opposed to what the original Japanese writings were are like very different in tone mm. in terms of Alex and Albert Wesker, both those characters. And it's like the common theme is that in the more English localizations, they want to 
make them seem like a more stereotypical, like I want to end the world (laughs) domination kind of annihilation villain. Whereas in the originals, they were kind of more subtle and they're a little bit more clever and they're a little bit more um, just nuanced in a way that American villains aren't really. that's too bad. I would have loved to have uh, performed it that way. So. It really sounds like you would have loved that. Yeah, it's we funny as you're like a four, they're like, we need to go to a nine. If I, can, if I can hang on to my youthful voice and looks, uh, perhaps I can get into the uh, Resident Evil 5 remake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. Give, give it about 10 years. I think like, I'll be 65 by the time they get there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're pumping out remakes a lot faster these days. So yes. it, could yeah. happen, like, it could happen a lot sooner. Yep. Mm-hmm. So speaking of Alex Wesker, uh, Delta Frost donated two bucks. Says question for DC: What do you know about Alex Wesker? Um, just that uh, that that Alex and um, uh, Albert had amazing sex at one point. The uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Um, what do I know about Alex? I mean, I know that there was like the Wesker children and, and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. I mean, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn does uh, yep. Alex's voice mm-hmm. in. Uh, whatever that Re- is. Revelations uh, too. Yeah, and uh, so I'm actually really honored that 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 she's my sister. Yeah. Um, she's great. And <laughs> actually, the, there's a there's a, a thing called Resident Evil Database in Brazil. Um, yep. uh, yeah. They do, they do a, a West. Yeah. yeah. They used to do a West here, and so one year, um, the year that that game came out. Um, I went to the studio where uh, Mary Elizabeth was mm-hmm. and I, and I, cause I asked her if she would do this quick little thing for me for that week. And she's like, absolutely. And she's like, so what are we going to do? And I go, I remember it's making up as uh, in the moment. And then it turned out Roger Craig Smith was in the studio recording something else. And I said, <laughs> Roger, do you mind popping into this video at one point? And he's like, sure. So, um, I'll try I think to remember. I, remember. I think I remember seeing that actually he pops up at the very end of it. Yeah. So it's very, mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, what I was going to say about that is. But people don't know, and may, maybe one day people can find it. But in that game, we, as an egg, Easter egg or something, they made us record a scene between myself and her, uh, Alex, as Alex and Albert, after we're dead and we're in hell. <laughs> and it's like this little brother sister <laughs> argument that we have. And I'm like, this is hysterical. And I go, this can't be in the game. They're like, no, no, this is a an Easter egg thing. But nobody's found it. So I don't know if they ever included it or not, but it was wow. important. That's oh, funny. I gotta I find to this. That. That'd be great. I'd like to hear them bickering back and forth. That'd be great. <laughs> speaking speaking of that um like little banter between Alex and Albert, like do you know about Revelations 2 having Project Gregor? There's something called Project Gregor. Um and it's actually a simulation um and what it's supposed to represent is the rebirth of albert uh, in in alex's eyes like trying to bring him back to life because that was our goal huh. with um with oh. revelations too and there's Very a break yeah yeah the, the reason why it's called project gregor is because this entire game revelations 2 it's kind of like a huge allegory it's a big reference to franz kafka's book called the metamorphosis yep. and uh. Both of the Wesker children are are kind of they're they're paralleled to those children. So it's kind of like after uh, Gregor is a character that turns into a giant bug. He's a giant bug for the entire novel. He eventually gets cast aside from his family and dies. Only after that does their father care about the daughter, Greet. And Alex compares herself to Greet multiple times in the game. Mm. And she's obsessed with Kafka. And of course she compares herself to that. And only after Spencer sees Wesker, you know, Wesker is like, you know, on this path and he's like gonna die. Like only after that does he pay attention to Alex as being this like savior, like you're mm-hmm. gonna be my search for immortality now. Mm-hmm. Just like in the story and in the author's life, only after um after like this this whole relationship with the son and the father is over, do they really care about the daughter? And she feels like the kind of backup plan. For Spencer, mm. and it's, right, it's exactly. super interesting point, yeah. the parallels that they've set up there. I told you she does um, like wow. she dives into a whole other level on the lore, which is wow. amazing. As Beggy's, yeah. <laughs> listen, like literally, Off Beggy, the top of the head. you talk, it's like it's like hearing Ruben Langdon talk when he talks like aliens. He's just he yeah. knows everything. He's so yeah. in depth right with it. it. DC knows. DC yeah, knows. <laughs> yeah. hey, like, I uh, love it. It's great. I love passion. It's great. Hey, ben, where do you tweet about this stuff? I make a lot of videos and I tweet about it before I make the video, but generally you could find this kind of stuff on my channel and the general general ROE channel. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But where do we, if we wanted to follow you on Twitter, what's your handle? 
Uh, baggy bag bag, as you see it here. <laughs> baggy bag bag. Oh. Yeah. Baggy bag bag. All lowercase, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's our peggy <laughs> yeah yeah i was really curious to know those uh those relationships between like you and uh, the actress for that and see if they like piece together anything that's really cool that they at least did um that scene in hell though that's that's nice I really it makes me see. like how much dialogue and stuff is not doesn't make games mm -hmm. but they sometimes include it in the coding of the game or something yeah so for instance there's um i, I did umbrella core umbrella core yeah, right um, mm -hmm which apparently is canon and yeah. I'm in it. Uh, but there's one speech they gave me where I talk about, um, uh, uh, and it was actually a monologue, but the way they only used like a, a line or two of it in the actual, well, okay. Well, I do this speech about the, the rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. Mm. Right. And so that's the speech and it goes on from before, but they just took that line and another line and it's apparently embedded in the game, uh, in the data, but it's not in the game. Mm -hmm. So you have to go and unlock all the voice files, and then you can find that voice file. It's just not assigned anywhere in the game. Yeah. Uh, finally, finally, somebody found that for me the other the other month, and I posted that online. Yeah, I remember we posted like, that. Yeah. And I did I did a Mass Effect uh, two, I did two and three, but in two I had a whole scene apparently that you can't get that you don't get in the game when you play it unless you have cheat codes. There's a certain cheat code thing that you can use, and then all of a sudden you can unlock Legion, and he talks, you know, he, he participates in scenes and stuff earlier in the game. And I'm like, but it's a cheat code. Like yeah. you wouldn't know this unless you knew some weird nerd that went data mining and fe figured that yep. out. And I'm like, yeah. it's like, why? What is up with you people? Yeah, you oh, had yeah. to record all the dialogue for it. <laughs> yeah. The, the reason why I started on that whole trade, that whole like vein of of information about those those Western children, is because there's there's blogs and there's people that get extremely involved with their role playing. They create websites. Uh, there's there's a site called Wesk Her, like H E R, <laughs> and it's all about Alex and and these relations. And they do a lot of data mining about files that didn't make it into Revelations two, but they were they were written as dialogue or files at some point that they ripped out and. If you see what they took out, it's crazy um, what like what it, the implications are. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of data. So she, that's stuff. the place for me to go to find out if they can find that scene, if they, if it's anywhere in in the data. Then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can probably contact them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Plant Forty Two Tumblr also. There's a Plant Forty Two. Uh, Tumblr I stay away blog. from Tumblr. Yeah. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think Tumblr was still a thing. I thought yeah. that got shut down. <laughs> Uh, well, all the good um, stuff got shut down, apparently. <laughs> I got a, a question for Eva. Um, since, you know, playing the character for so long, uh, so long ago, and having this, you know, history of being her, uh, is there anything from Sheva that really stuck with you as her, like, her personality or her, you know, just something that resonated with you that you could carry with you throughout the rest of your career? Um, definitely. Uh, she just has a, a huge heart. Um, um, I just loved, I mean, there was such a great um, relationship that she had to, to Chris and her work. She was just very passionate about wanting to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that her lines, you know, just this, these last two weeks of like, you know, knowing that I was gonna be here, I kind of went back and looked at some of her stuff and her lines land so, you know, touchingly to me, like I always, you know, was very fond of the dialogue that she got to say because she she didn't seem uh, over sexualized or you know um, uh, like yeah I, you know I imagine some characters are she just seemed like she wanted to do her job she wanted to do her job well and she was intelligent and she just wanted to help she wanted to help her people she wanted to help mm -hmm. her partner like so much of that is you know. I think of like the state of the world we're in right now, as far as her being a young, youthful person that wanted to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great role model for what we're mm -hmm. going through right now. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's time, you know, it's aged well. Yeah. 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 yeah it really has. It's um, a great co-op game. So to uh, to yeah. continue off that um, about Sheva and everything. So how much of the actual like actions, because there's a lot of action scenes in there, mm -hmm. anything. And I know you did obviously the mocap and everything. How much of the action did they have you do? Because sometimes they don't want the actors to do it. They have the stunt guys come in and stuff, but. Mm -hmm. I did all of it. 
Oh, nice. nice. Wow. So you were right alongside like Ruben Langdon and everything and Patricia. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, I, when I got hired, it was first to do the motion capture. So I, I had to audition for a lot of the action. Yeah. And, uh, you know, went through the training with the guns and the rifles and such. And I'm right handed, but I had to learn. I mean, that was my first time shooting a gun. So I have learned all my gunplay with my left hand. So <laughs> to this oh, wow. day, I shoot better with my left than I do with my right because oh, wow. yeah. I spent really? so much time doing this. Yeah. Of, you know, and, um, you know, I have a, a dance, an extensive dance, professional dance and circus background. So, oh, wow. you know, they took that into account that, okay, she can be thrown around a bit. So, and I was always down for it. So, <laughs> I, I had a blast and, uh, you know, that, that was what I was hired for first. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I went through another set of auditions for, for Sheva's voice. So because you came from a, a physical background of doing the circus and dance, is that why you went for the mocap or is it something just pushed you in that direction instead of, you know, applying for one of the speaking roles, character roles, but you, you went in for mocap first. I didn't go for anything first. Okay. I had a phone call <laughs> saying, Hey, you know, it was it was through uh, Richard Dorton, who is a, a friend of mine. He was uh, one of the producers in the beginning of the production, and he, I guess, suggested that I would be good for this. This, like I said, I had no idea what this was. Right. So they said, "Yeah, you know, you should you should meet with these people and try out some things. We're we're doing something." And I'm like, "What are you doing?" can't tell you i was like okay i trust you <laughs> right so we, well and, and and that went on for almost like a couple of months i'm not kidding where i was just like what is this i don't know what i'm auditioning for <laughs> and um so i i didn't even know at that point how much i would be doing mm -hmm. i didn't know excuse me i didn't know it was i mean you know i obviously i started to to, to gather the information as I was going through it. Okay, this this character shoots guns. This character runs a lot. <laughs> um, and and uh, when we were shooting the the Privas, I I just kept thinking, well, I like this character. This you know whatever this is going to be, mm -hmm. I, you know I, I really liked being a part of it. Like I I start I started to feel a little bit more comfortable. Like all right, okay. Right. Everybody seems legit, very professional. I'll just keep doing it. I'll show up the next day. Yeah. And uh, and then when I finally got the script, I was like, oh, oh, damn. OK, yeah. <laughs> this is huge. And and like I said, at that point, it was still just the motion capture at that point. Like I didn't I didn't go in going, oh, I'm auditioning for motion capture for this role. I was right. like, you know, showing up for anything, just a gig. basically. Up. Yeah. I was showing up and they did, would tell me to show up the next day. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, have you ever come to like uh, any rumors or has anybody ever approached you from the Capcom side about Sheva ever making a return? No, hmm. not yet. I wonder why. Hey, but, but, but that's a question though, because like you, um, like you're the, one of the heroes of that game and that character they don't do anything else with that character. I'm asking Beggy Beg, 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 Beg. Um, <laughs> like, does Sheva go on in any of the books or anything? She's not in like the literature or the lore that's like outside of the game, uh, Resident Evil 5, really. Yeah. Pretty much continue I'm that angry. one entry. Well, we want Sheva back. <laughs> yeah. She should be. She's in not. Comments. I mean, 2020 needs her back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of those new characters. Uh, that they had like just like peers in Resident Evil 6 that I really enjoyed and I was hoping right. we would see that character return and there's just so many unfinished loose ends in the series that mm -hmm. it would be great to see you know all these characters come back and, and there's so many different stories that could be told like yeah. you were saying Baggy uh, with the Revelation series that could continue on with Wesker we could have mm -hmm. Sheva back in another numbered series and then we have all those characters that were left opened uh, uh, in Resident Evil 6 so there is a lot of potential here. Mm -hmm. The chat definitely agrees. Everybody's uh, seconding that. They love Sheva. We need Sheva. Sheva deserves her own game. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely a lot of love for Sheva. Well, like, there was a lot put into that character. Like, when they made her, she was just a character that a lot of people really loved and stuff. And, you know, there is, like, an earlier history with her. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like she's, like, the little sister of the group for, like, Josh Stone yep. uh, mm -hmm. and everything. And you could have, like, prequels to that. Because Resident Evil is no stranger to doing prequel games. Yeah. 
everything. If I remember correctly, TJ Storm did uh, the mocap for him as well. Yes, he did. The guy, guy's a badass. Yeah. <laughs> he does TJ good work. I go back. Oh yeah, we go. We we. Uh, it was great to work with him again because we actually had worked on a couple movies. Oh my goodness, I don't know about eight years before that, and so Ooh. I had no idea that he was involved until we got to the set, and I was like. So, so the fact that he was playing Josh, that was just like, it was perfect because we it already did it. Really, had a it really worked out. Yep. That's cool. Well, there, yeah. there is always potential. We discussed this earlier in our Resident Evil Six panel that they are doing the Resident Evil Infinite Darkness CG series on Netflix. Oh, that's and right, in yeah. that synopsis, it said that they would um, be going back through the series history. So it would be cool to see an appearance of all these characters again. You know, that would bring both of you guys back. Um, so. Well, you know, <laughs> huh? not quite how Hollywood works <laughs> yeah I know yeah I mean, if it's if they go if you're in the game you're probably not going to be in in, in the um you know in the the theatrical side of stuff they tend to at least with definitely with the movies they they yeah. go for his star uh, oh, like like cute cool. star names but the, but the CGI it depends on, on which production house gets it because yep. they also want to put their stamp on these games so yep. a lot of times though the fans would like to have that the same actors back they're like, well, the, we don't actually work with them as much as we do with these people. And now that we got this project, we want to get the people that we like into these roles. And, mm -hmm. You know, which is like, you know, it's it's how all businesses. It's like who you know kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I don't, yeah. I don't blame. It gives me hope, though. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you know, not everybody can be like Steve Bloom and voice like Wolverine for twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, when you also yeah. a different company, right? Because Cap, like, no offense, Capcom, and God bless you, and I love you, and if you ever want to hire me again i'm around but the capcom does not usually do they're not usually consistent in keeping the same voices yeah that's uh, true i think they're getting a little better about that in the, the last couple of games so yeah, yeah i think uh, i agree yeah. with that it looks like they're um like they're they're hiring young talent right now that can do the physical performance as well as the voice performance so you know that carries over to multiple games for a while hopefully Right, and then they bring the geriatric voiceover actors in. <laughs> to, give, to give that nice, deep, experienced tone. Experienced. Yeah. As long as I have my depends with me, I'm fine. So. <laughs> That's professionalism right, right. there. Right. <laughs> well, we're kind of uh, reaching the end of our hour here. we got about 15 minutes left. Um, I want to give you guys a chance to uh, promote your, if you're doing Streamly, which uh, DC you are, right? Tomorrow? I got a, yeah, I have a stream late today, today, today. At 5 p.m. L.A. time, 8 p.m. New York time. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's uh, streamly.com slash DC Douglas. And you can still, you can actually even order it while we're, we're even doing the, mm -hmm. the, the, the signing. And then I'm doing that on Instagram and YouTube. I'm going to try to set up to do them both simultaneously. Okay. Right. Oh, I just can't do it on my iPad. I'll have to do it anyway. Uh, but I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be simultaneously streaming both there. And so if you pick the thing, I'll be talking to you while I sign it, show it. If you're on Instagram, I might be able to pull you up and talk to you while I'm doing it. So we'll see. It's it's kind of hard to figure out that. But that's yeah. that's the live signing at five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Eva missed the the date to put in for that, so she's not going to be doing one this time. But definitely, if you have one come up in the future, we'll promote it and hopefully send all the fans yeah, your way. Yeah. Of course. Yes, but I do have... You have your I, own site. <laughs> I have my yeah. own site at evilladare.com. Mm -hmm. um, I have a... There's, if you go to the shop okay. page, you're going to see my whole collection of Sheva cosplay. I shot in Sheva costume with a great photographer, uh, Roland's Patagon. And so there's a bunch of pictures there that you know I'll sign and mail out to you. So nice. that's evilladare.com. Yeah. Check out the shop. There they're, they're really cool. Really, yeah. really good cosplay. Thank what about um, their social media? I guess DC, we'll start with you. So that way people, I'm, it's on Instagram, but did you tell them what your Instagram was? <laughs> I did not. It is, uh, <laughs> it is uh, at uh, uh, Mr. DC D uh, Douglas. So MRDC Douglas. Okay. And that's on uh, Instagram and Twitter. You can actually use it to find me on YouTube, but uh, YouTube is also DC Douglas Live. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, Eva, what was your uh, social media? It's it's Woo! Eva Ladera. Right? Okay, so so my Twitter, because you know, I'm sure my my diehard fans from 2009 know I was going by my 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 legal name back then, mm -hmm. Karen Dyer. So everyone's like, who's Eva Ladera? So <laughs> I, you know, talk about what's changed in the last 11 years. Uh, you know, I go by my stage name now, but my Twitter handle is Karen Sheva Eva. And uh, so Karen, yeah, at Karen Sheva Eva, 
And then uh, Instagram is Evil Adair, at Evil Adair. And uh, is there anything else? I think that's it. Oh, okay. Where'd you come yeah. up with that name, by the way, Evil Adair? So, also in the last 11 years, I, I have spent <laughs> uh, a good part of my, my life as a, as a burlesque performer. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, with my circus skills, uh, mm -hmm. I, I had a, a, a pretty long career doing uh, burlesque as an alter ego, and Evil Adair is the name I went by. So oh. after a while, I just got kind of sick of, you know, going back and forth between names, and I just chose one. Right. I mean, it's your profession. You run with the one you have. <laughs> oh, right. Well, that's cool, though. I love the name. It's so interesting. I remember when I was emailing you, I was like, it's Karen, but I see Eva everywhere. So that's why I asked yeah. you. I was like, do you go by which one? You're just an Eva? Okay, it's Eva. From now on, it's all it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I go by Eva, but if you if you see me on the street and you go, hey, Karen, I'll say hi. <laughs> I'll well, answer to it. Any um, parting words for the fan base before we wrap this up? I guess, DC, we'll start with you, though, if you want. Leave me alone. There it is. <laughs> uh, very honest. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> no, I just did, um, then God bless y'all. Not that I'm, I'm an atheist, but still, God bless you all. It's uh, <laughs> nice, to, uh, nice to be in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a video game series that has so many fans, so many diehard fans, mm -hmm. fans that I've actually, some that I've had since 2009, and it's pretty freaking remarkable. And I'm grateful for all of it. So, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. And Eva? Yeah, I'm I'm just so glad to, you know, was able to join everybody here today and and hopefully we get to do this in person. Yes, next hopefully. Year. That'd be amazing. Yeah. That would be amazing. Like, you know, let's start something. Um and then I promised I promised so, uh one 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 person on uh Twitter here that I would say this for him because he was the first to ask. You see, it is I'm using it without my glasses. Damn it, Leon! I need ammo. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Blame bitch, I'm here. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on here. This is awesome. I'm glad we got to put our RE5 panel together and uh, show that game some more love because it's, it's getting a little out there now. It's been what 11 years, yep. so uh, it's about due for a remake, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I really appreciate you coming on there, right? <laughs> appreciate you coming on here and, and uh, volunteering your time. And again, thanks to everybody who's watching. Uh, stay tuned. We will be back in about 30 minutes. There is a change of schedule. Raj uh, Ramaya is not playing in uh, the next set. He's moved to tonight. We're going to do the cosplay showcase next. In about 30 minutes. Uh, it's a video. It's about 30 minutes long itself. It's going to show all the cool cosplay. It's got music by Mono Memory, so it's really enjoyable. If you want to hang out and listen to some stuff, or if you want to jump over and maybe check out uh, Hazeblade on Twitch, he's doing some speed runs. It's got some time in there for you guys to branch out and see what you want to do. But definitely come back when we bring our RE5 or RE2 panel. That's at five central. So what is that? Three Pacific? You people <laughs> with central times. Yes. No one oh, uh, central. Yeah. <laughs> time is hard. Or Eastern. <laughs> yeah. From now on, I'm not doing that anymore. There's so much confusion in the emails. At <laughs> a point. Yeah. Yeah. It's always going to be Eastern or Pacific from now on. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, uh, we're looking forward to that. It's going to be a good panel. Um, and again, the cosplay showcase, I'd like you to check it out. See all the hard work that these people put into their costumes um, and show them some you know some love and support for what they do. And, and don't last... forget us photographers who shoot them. Yes, and the photographers. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, you got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, But again, thank you, DC, Eva. I really appreciate it. And yeah, uh, you, I know yeah. we'll be talking again soon. So... To everybody who's watching, stick around. We will be back. <laughs>